I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth and uh, he unloads on them some very important and significant information and truths that I want to take one of them and share with you today. I want to begin by highlighting some things. I want to talk about uh, some people. Um, tell you about um, two brothers who worked tirelessly for an invention that they were trying to create. And over the years, as they worked on them, they were told that it would never be, it would never accomplish. They told them they were crazy. It would never happen, but they persisted and they continued to do it until eventually the Wright brothers got their air drone to fly. And they're the creators of the airplane. We travel around the world because of them. Or maybe I could tell you about a gentleman who went to film school and was rejected three times from three different film schools until he finally went through, his, did what he had to do and became a gentleman named Steven Spielberg. Or maybe I can tell you about the guy who was fired from a company he started but got hired back and once he got hired back he created the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad. His name was Steve Jobs. Or maybe I can tell you about a gentleman who through the course of his life his fiance died he had two failed businesses. He had a nervous breakdown. He tried to run for political office eight times, eventually won, and eventually became the president of the United States. His name was Abraham Lincoln. None of those impress you? Let me keep trying. <laughs> Let me talk about a guy who was fired from a newspaper he worked for, and they told him he lacked imagination. His name was Walt Disney. Or maybe I could, I'm just waiting for y'all to catch up and say amen to something. <laughs> nothing seems to resonate with this 10 o'clock crowd right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Or maybe I can tell you about the young man who was cut by his high school basketball team, went home and locked himself in the room and cried. His name was Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, oh, now y'all waking up. No, I, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Or maybe I could tell you about the guy who wrote his first book and was rejected by publishers and because he had tried all these publishers and they all rejected him, he threw it in the trash. His wife retrieved it and encouraged him to keep trying and that book became a hit and he went on to write 100 books, 100 books, bestsellers. And some of his movies were turned into movies. His name was Stephen King. <laughs> now y'all are, what, I got y'all now. Okay, y'all got y'all, I got y'all. Maybe I could tell you about the music group that was turned down by multiple recording companies because their music, their music style was on its way out. A little group called the Beatles. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, very much too. Oh, I can tell you about this, this young woman who was dismissed from drama school because it was noted that she was too shy to be able to be an effective Actress, her name was Lucille Ball. She goes back a few years. Some of you young people don't know who she is. Or maybe I could tell you about the man who was considered too stupid to ever succeed in being a music composer. His name was Ludwig van Beethoven. Or the, or the, the teachers who told this young man he was too stupid to learn. His name was Thomas Edison. All I'm trying to do is tell you about people who once were told by society or some other humans that they can never be anything or do anything or achieve anything, but yet they went on to achieve significant things. I thought I ought to talk to you about that. And, I, and the question I'm raising is who does God choose to use? If I was gonna put a title to this message, that's what it would be. Who does God choose? To use. 
As a matter of fact, uh, I didn't tell you about this one. Let me tell you about another person who was fired from her first TV job because she was too emotionally involved in her stories. Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> this is a tough crowd to win over today. Um, yet the Apostle Paul, in writing to the church in Corinth, drops this nugget of truth to them and tells them, here are the kinds of people that God chooses to use. Chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians lays it out. Can I give it to you real quick? Let me read it to you right quick. Matter of fact, let me just walk through verse beginning at 20, verse 26. Can I start at verse 26? Let me start at verse 26 and tell you the kind of people that God does not choose to use. Can I do that? Are y'all sleepy? Are y'all are y'all tired? Or? I just don't. I'm not feeling the normal kickback that I get from this crowd. Y'all just sleep on me. Wake up. Thank you very much. Come down front, wherever you are. Let's come take this front seat right here. I think that was one of my deacons. Deacon, come on, come on down front. Come on, sit right here. Hurry up quickly. I'm gonna need you because I ain't got no help today. So I'm gonna need. That's one of our deacons. Yeah, praise the Lord. There you go. You see, right front, right, right here, between these two gorgeous women right here. I know you married, but just stay, stay, keep it straight. Yeah, I'm gonna need you right there. Thank you very much. God bless you. I appreciate it. Thank you. There you go. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I need. Amen. Y'all know I, I preach better when I feel feedback. When I know I got people with me. My, I, I know they say you're not supposed to have feedback and you're supposed to be able to preach when there ain't no feedback and I expect that from white people but I don't expect that from black people no harm Rob I'm just saying Rob. <laughs> who are the people that God does not choose to use before I tell you who he will use, I need to tell you who he won't use. In verse 26 it says, verse 26, are you with me? Verse 26 it says, for you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. There it is right there. It says, here are the people who are not called not chosen by God, not selected, not picked up, not called upon by God. Who are those? They, who are they? They are number one, it says right here in verse 26, those who are wise according to the flesh. People who think they're so smart, y'all met them, they know it all, they have an answer for everything, who can't be taught, in, be taught anything, never take any classes, never get into an environment to learn, they know it alls. Now, whether you realize it or not, there's one or at least one somewhere on your row. Look up and down your row and see if you can figure out who it is. It's the person that has known they're not taking any notes because they know it all. They're not, they don't have their Bibles open because they don't think they need to open their Bibles. There they are. Go ahead. Point to them wherever they is. They're on your row. Yeah, they, they, they are know-it-alls. God can't use you when you think you have it all together and that you know everything, that you never take the time to get in the Word, to learn, to get in an environment, to be taught. You never take any classes. God can't use you. Wise according to the flesh. But that's not the only kind of person God can't use. He says, not many mighty. That, that word mighty means the strong, the people who think they're strong and powerful, who think they got it all together, who think they are so strong and so gifted and so talented. Y'all, y'all, y'all know these people, y'all met these jokers who think that they are the greatest. They want to know how you get the job when they are more qualified. Why'd you get promoted and they didn't get promoted because they're more gifted than you are. I, I, I'm just trying to plain, make it plain for you to understand that God does not make, use the same criteria that he, when he selects people as the world chooses to use for criteria. And then he says, not only, not only the people, he doesn't, God not only doesn't choose the wise according to uh, their own, to the flesh, not, he doesn't choose the mighty, he also does not choose the noble 
the noble, there it is, verse 26, the noble are not called, the noble one. <clears throat> noble means the ones who are, um, are, are uh, aristocrats. These, these are the people that got all of the stuff. They got all the resources. They got all the money. They got everything that they need to succeed. God doesn't choose those kinds of people for his agenda. And I, I, I want to try to help y'all see, though, Paul goes into verse number 27 and says, these are the people that God chooses. Now, I don't know where you are, but I want to be in the environment that God can choose to use me. Yes, I, I, when I was growing up, when I was growing up uh, as a teenager, I didn't get chosen by many people. I, 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 when they had a football game or whatever they did, a basketball, street, playing street ball, they didn't choose me. They, they would pick over me. You know, when you're picking teams and I, I I got Everett, and I got Harry, and I got Todd, and I got this person. They are, at the end, they'd always say, oh, you can head, John. Because <laughs> they said, and they were saying I didn't, I, I didn't count. I wouldn't make a difference. It didn't matter. They dismissed me. They didn't choose me. And I, I never made it to the high school. I tried out for the high school basketball team, but I never made the high school basketball team. I, I was not selected or chosen for the basketball team. So I wanted to be around it so much, I decided to be the manager. Go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> I kept score and I was the manager of the basketball team. I was the manager of the football team. Uh, they didn't choose me, y'all not hear me. I applied for a bunch of churches when I met my 20s and none of the churches chose me. They looked past me, they dismissed me, they didn't consider me, they ruled me out. But I, I'm so glad that I've learned that y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. I'm so glad they didn't choose me, but God has chosen me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you need to be the person that God chooses. My classmates, there's Jeffrey Butler, there's one of my classmates right there. We went to school together. There's several of them here in the church that are members here now at First Baptist. They didn't invite me to their parties. Not Jeffrey, not Jeffrey, I'm sorry, Je I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called your name, I wasn't speaking about you, 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 you didn't, you didn't, but you didn't choose me, you didn't invite, you, no, you're not the person I'm talking about, you didn't do that. They didn't invite me to their party, but neither did they come to mine. Now, Jeffrey, you didn't come to my party <laughs> until I became the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Glenard. Yeah, now, now, you, now you're a member of the, you come to my party, I throw it every Sunday. Come on, somebody. I throw the party every Sunday. I throw the party now. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. You got me, Pastor. You got me. It's okay. I'm just trying to speak to somebody so that you know the kinds of people that God chooses. I got to get back up here to my notes. I'm going to speak to somebody who's feel left out, who feel abandoned, who feels that God cannot possibly use you or select you. I want to pick and talk to you today and let you see the kinds of people that God chooses and uses. And he begins right here. He tells us right here in verse number 27. Number 20, verse 26, he told us who he doesn't choose. But in verse 27, he tells us who he does choose. He says, but God has chosen. Stick a pen, highlight that. There it is right there. Here are the people and the types of people that God chooses. It's going to surprise you. It's going to shock you. Who are the people that God chooses? God has chosen, number one, the foolish things of this world. Why? To put to shame the wise. Y'all excuse me right here. God chooses the foolish. Somebody say, God cho chooses the foolish. God chooses the foolish. Tell the person on the next side of you, God chooses the foolish. You know what it means? Foolish means dull. It means stupid. It mean, matter of fact, in this definition, it means the blockhead people that are considered blockheads. God chooses those people. You're dull. You're, you're, you're not considered the sharpest knife in the drawer. Your elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. Uh, you're sitting in the boat rowing, but roar, roar, rowing, but you don't have any oars in your hand. It's, it's, it's that person that people have considered that you could not possibly be used by God. God chooses the foolish. And you know what he wants to do? He wants to take somebody that everybody thinks cannot possibly do anything significant and do something major in your life. 
Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. He, you, you, it's the person that everybody else has counted out. They, they looked at you and said, you ain't nothing. They don't, they don't give you any status. They don't consider you. They call, but God says, I choose number one. I'm choosing the foolish ones. But hold up, he didn't stop there. That's the first kind of person he chooses, but he doesn't stop there. Hold up, here's another one. He says, I, he, oh, wait a minute. He said, I want to choose the foolish because I want to put to shame the wise. I, I want to take the ones who are so smart and make them look stupid when I take somebody who doesn't look so smart and do something significant with their life. But that's not the only kind of person he chooses. Look at here, this, is, this gives me excited. I get thrilled when I look at this. He says, and God has chosen, verse 27, put it up on the screen, verse 27, God not only chooses the foolish, but God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Y'all not hearing me today. The weak means those who are without strength. That's what weak means. When you realize you can't win in your own strength and in your own ability and in your own power. You, this, hold up, who am I talking to today? Somebody who feels you don't have the gifting, you don't have the talent, you don't have the power, you don't have the knowledge. You, you're weak when you look at your own self. You realize how jacked up and weak you are. God says you are a candidate that he can use for his glory. Somebody say, preach on, pastor. I'm doing the best that I can. Hold up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at verse number 28. He goes on and say, and the base things of the world. Somebody say, the base things of the world. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked the question. The base things are those who are, listen carefully, here's the definition, without kin, without descendants, with the unknown descendants, un unknown uh, relatives. It's, let, let, here, here, here's, let, me, let me break it down. Let me put it in 2023 language. It's those who don't know who their daddy is, is who he's talking about. Those who don't know who your father failed to take ownership of you, take, failed to acknowledge that he's your papa, that he's your father. God says it's okay that he walked away from you. God said your earthly daddy might have let you, but I'm your heavenly daddy and I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen. I'm looking in the building for all of those people who have felt fatherless and felt left out and have family that don't want to own up to you and don't want to acknowledge that you are in their family. I got great news for you. God said, you are a candidate that he can use. Somebody fist bump your neighbor and say, I'm a candidate for that. I don't know who's my family. They don't take ownership for me. They don't invite me. They don't come around me. My father never, I never met my daddy. You are a candidate that God can use. I don't know who I'm speaking to today. I feel a shout down in my sanctified soul for somebody. Hold up, ooh, hold up. He didn't stop there. Not only does he do that, he choose the base things, but he also used those, uh, use the things which are despised the despised God has chosen. Those are the ones, uh, the word despised mean to be, uh, to make utterly nothing of. Uh, it, they didn't think you would amount to anything. They didn't, consider, matter of fact, they probably told you, you'll never amount to anything. God wants to use you. Who, 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 who am I talking to? Where? You got, you got despised, you got written off, you got rejected, you got despised by people. And then I'm almost finished. I'm bringing my plane in for a landing. I'm pulling my car into the garage. I'm pulling my boat to the dock. I'm uh, putting the dishes in the dishwasher. I'm pulling, I'm pulling the vegetables out of the garden. I'm, I'm bringing it to a close. I'm coming to a conclusion. But hold up. Here's one last other thing that God chooses. He chooses the foolish, the weak, the base, the despised. But in verse 28, it also says uh, uh, he chooses those which are not. Somebody say those who are not. That's those who are in the negative. <laughs> Y'all not hearing me. That's those who don't have enough money in the bank to even pay your own bills that you already have. 
those who are not, the negative, you're in the minus category, you're in the minus status. God can choose to use and wants to choose to use those who don't have enough to pay and do. You're in the negative. Who am I preaching to today? I, I think somebody, it's got to apply to somebody here today. I, it's got to mean something to somebody today that God looks over all of the people that think they got it all together and think they so gifted and so knowledgeable and so smart that God looked past all of them and picks you for his kingdom and for his glory and for his advancement. All I'm trying to do is find somebody who's discouraged and feel that God has forgotten about you. I got a word for you. He is picking you out of everybody else. He's going to pick you. Somebody high five your name and say, he's going to pick me. I'm the least of these. I'm the, I'm the, matter of fact, God told Saul when he, before he became king, well, after he became king, God said to Saul, when you considered yourself little in your own eyes, I picked you. Y'all not hearing me. That's what all I'm trying to tell somebody. You might see yourself as little in your own eyes, but the God, the God that we serve looks beyond all that you don't have and all that you fail to have and all that you haven't done and everything that's empty and said, ooh, there's somebody that I can use. Somebody give God a shout right there. Out of all of the people he can choose to you, he chose me. When I think about my life, when I look back over my life, when I look back over what I've come through and what I've been through and what I've experienced, I've come to realize that everything I've been through, God used it to prepare me to be where I am right now. My, my, my empty bank account, God was getting me ready. My, my rejection by all of the women and all of the men in my school, God was getting me ready for what I'm doing right now. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but whoever you are, I'm trying to give you a word to get ready. God will and can use you. Hallelujah. I wish I could get a crowd. I wish I could get some amens up in this camp. Oh, I got to hurry up. I act like I'm acting like I got all day. I'm excited and thankful that God chooses those who are the least of these. That's who God chooses to use. I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm preaching to. This message might be for five people, but whoever you is, God want me to tell you he wants to pick those who are the least of these. So the question is, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to, I'm finished. I was waiting for somebody to say, take your time, but y'all didn't. I gave you time to say, take your time. It's too late to say it now. Why does God do that? Here's why, look at verse 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. You know why God would choose all of these people? Because they are the ones that are not trying to make a name for themselves. They are the ones that when God elevates them and puts the spotlight on them, when the, when the reporters come to ask questions and to interview them, they're the ones that's going to say, I'm here because of what Jesus did for me. They're the ones that say, I give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who saved me and forgave me. And that's why God chooses you because you don't want any glory for yourself. You want glory to go to the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Who am I preaching to today? Who am I talking to today? Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The King of glory is coming in, and the King of glory is choosing to use you. Somebody high five, find four or five people and high five them and say, I want God to choose and use me. 
I want him to pick me up out of my muck and miry clay. He's going to pick you up out of your horrible circumstance and situation and work a miracle. He's going to save you, cleanse you, forgive you, anoint you, empower you, use you, gift you, and take you to higher heights and places you never dreamed you would ever go. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has already done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Hey, I feel a shout down in my sanctified soul. Hey. I know you feel rejected. I know you feel left out, but it's okay. Somebody say, why does God do that? Because he does not want to share his glory. I didn't, I didn't know this growing up. I didn't know this growing up. I learned it later, but I wish I had known it while I was growing up that when they didn't come to my party and when they didn't invite me to their party and when they talked about me and when they saw me coming, they stopped talking and when all that happened, I didn't know it then, but I know now that the reason God did that because he didn't want anybody to t try to take credit for where he's taken me. Oh, y'all ought to be able to give God a greater shout than that. Because I don't want to share my glory with anybody all the glory belongs to the king of kings and the lord of lords can i get somebody to go ahead and thank god for where he's going to take you who am i preaching to today lock this truth down in your hearts God told me growing up, I don't want you to fit in. I tried to fit in. I was like a, a, a square peg trying to fit into a round circle hole. God said, I don't want you to fit in. I, I don't want you to become like them. I don't want you to become a part of the group. Because where I'm going to take you, they can't go. Amen. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen. Tell yourself, I don't need to be a part of the group. All I need to be is a part of God's plan for my life. If I'm talking to you, hold your hand up. Let me pray for you. If I'm talking to you, if this is you, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all of these hands raised, all of these persons today that I know you have a great assignment for their lives they tried to fit in but now they know they don't need to fit in and I pray in the pre precious and matchless name of Jesus that by the power of your might and that you would do something spectacular in their lives and remind them today father that you choose the least the unwanted the rejected the foolish you pick, you choose those, God, who are not mighty. And I pray today that you raise them up to places that's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. I want to make an appeal in these few moments that I have that if you don't know the Lord Jesus, all of this begins with a commitment to Jesus Christ. He's the one that does it, but you gotta, I wanna encourage you to be surrendered to his will for your life. Be totally surrendered to Jesus. If you're here today and you have never received the forgiveness of sins that Jesus offers, he forgives us of our sins. He cleanses us. And if you have not accepted that, I wanna invite you to come. It doesn't matter what you did, how recent you did it, how often you did it, it does not matter. 
Jesus has made provisions for your sins to be forgiven. And I want to invite you to come and say yes to him. Or maybe you're, you're unsure of your eternal status. I want to invite you to come. Or maybe you are backslidden and you need to rededicate yourself to him. I want to invite you to come. Or maybe you're already saved and you need a church home. This is a church that you can be a part of. So proud of y'all. So proud. I see you. Right now, come on. Amen. So proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you. We're holding nothing. That's right, come on. We're holding nothing. I surrender all. I'm proud of you. If you're already saved and you want to be a member of a great church, this here is a great church. Let me invite you to come. You're already walking with God. You already have a relationship, but you, you need a church home. This is a great church for you to be a part of. Come right now while the blood's running warm in your veins. Online, there's a phone number for you to call. There's an email for you to click or links to the email too. There's a button for you to click. Let me invite you to respond right online. You can become a member of our church no matter where in the world you live, what part of the country you live in, you can be a part of our family. Let me invite you to go ahead and respond to the information on the bottom of the screen for you. This is the time for you to do it. Amen, anybody else? Let's thank the Lord for those who've come already. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you to a room and sit down and minister to you. They're going to ask you some questions, talk to you, share some scriptures, and pray with you. They're going to give you some instructions. You're going to walk out of here differently than the way you came in, okay? Father, I thank you for all of those who've come today. I pray for you to manifest yourself to them. Let their faith be extended to you. Let their heart of repentance be evident in their choices and decisions. And let them walk in the center of your will. In Jesus' name, amen.